Okay, so uh, let's get started. Uh, my name is Ning Kuang. I'm the program manager for um, Cloud Foundry running on the Azure engineering team. And my name is Thomas. I'm the engineering manager from Enterprise Open Source team from Microsoft. So today we're going to go through the process to running applications on the hybrid environment with Azure and the Azure stack, um, mainly on um, .NET applications. So uh, I'll go through the, the background and the concept, and uh, Thomas later will demo the, uh, the, the um, an, an integrated CI CD process on Azure and Azure Stack. Okay, so um, 10 years ago, um, that's when Azure just started being built. And at that time, majority of our customers' uh, software are running on um, the physical servers. Um, it's amazing how the, um, in, in the past 10 years, the technology evolves. Now a lot of our customers are already running their application in the cloud, and they release in a much faster uh, rate, in days and uh, weeks. However, um, still, the public cloud is not the only destination for the cloud. And as, actually, as a matter of fact, um, uh, based on our survey, majority, uh, like 90% of our customers, still think they need a hybrid cloud as their strategy. Um, so when, when I look at, uh, based on our early customer um, interaction, uh, we identify these three scenarios as the basic hybrid scenarios. The first one is the edge and disconnected solution. This is when you don't have the um, stable connection to the internet. You need to run a workload on-prem and, uh, and then prepare the data before you connect to the internet. The second is cloud application to meet the various regulation. This is when you need um, an application that runs across the globe um, and in different regions. Uh, while some regions, due to the data uh, sovereignty uh, requirement regulations, cannot run in public. They have to run on-prem. The third is the cloud application um, model on-premise. Um, um, this is for actually quite typical. A lot of customers who want the modernization of their applications, they take care, um, take advantage of microservice framework, containers. However, they want to stay on-premise. Um, so you, you need a private data center still. So to solve the, um, uh, solve the hybrid uh, solution, there are different ways. And a very typical way is customer have their private data center and then they choose one of the public cloud. And then they, they need to ramp up and manage two clouds. For um, Microsoft, uh, when Azure Stack is designed, um, what we want to approach this is we want to create a consistent cloud. Um, basically, we want to duplicate the majority of the Azure cloud services on on-premise. So basically, Azure Stack is an extension of Azure or um, a duplication of Azure uh, just in the private data center. And then the, the basic principles is consistency. So um, the goal is the developers and the operators, um, their experience will be the same. And majority of the services, for example, SQL services, blob storage services, monitoring services, will be on both on Azure and on-premise. And the third, they can be worked together. Um, you can run your application on one cloud and still access the resources on the other cloud, um, use proper connectivities. Um, have, um, how many people have been heard of Azure Stack? Okay, cool, so um, majority of uh, you. Uh, Azure Stack is already G8, and the Pivotal Cloud Foundry, uh, uh, Cloud Foundry running on G8 uh, is also G8, and Pivotal Cloud Foundry is on, on Azure Stack is G8 five months ago in May. So you're welcome to try that, um, especially with the, the hybrid scenario. Um, combined with Cloud Foundry running on Azure and Azure Stack, you have a consistent path system, which is the uh, Cloud Foundry, the multi-cloud solution, 
running on a consistent hybrid cloud. Uh, basically, if you want to run Cloud Foundry, you need to utilize the cloud provider's tool to deploy the deploy pod, Bosch, and Cloud Foundry. Uh, you can use the same tool. Uh, we have Azure Resources Manager, call, uh, also called ARM, um, and uh, the scripting, the SDK and the scripting to um, utilize the resources. Um, and for DevOps tools, um, we have Azure Pipeline, uh, which uh, you must hear uh, the Visual Studio Team Service is, is just renamed uh, the Azure DevOps Services. And Azure Pipeline is one part of it, which is originally the VSTS build and uh, release service. And you can also use open service CI CD tools like Concourse, Jenkins. To take a closer look, uh, here is a diagram uh, outlining the interface between the Cloud Foundry and the underlying cloud providers. Uh, it starts with Bosch, which will create the, the, the uh, infrastructure. And usually you, you need to use, um, on Azure you use Terraform or use the ARM template to build, uh, to create Bosch. And here you use exactly the same form to build that on the Azure stack. And then uh, Bosch talk to Azure CPI and the CPI talk to the ARM um, uh, API um, and, and with the underlying uh, cloud uh, providers. Um, for, um, with the same CPI, you can talk to both Azure and the Azure Stack. And uh, also with Azure Stack, you have the similar uh, concept of HA. Uh, you use the availability set. Um, you can scale uh, using the local services on the Azure Stack. For example, you can use Azure Stack blob storage to replace the CC blob store. And you can use the, the MySQL service for, uh, for the, um, the CCDB too. The authentication is a little bit tricky. Uh, if you want to um, use just the private cloud, you can use the, uh, the, the uh, Azure Directory uh, uh, Federation service, ADFS. This is supported on Azure Stack with Cloud Foundry 2. Um, if you want to integrate it, uh, you want to access Azure while you are on-prem with Azure Stack, uh, you can use AAD, uh, which is the Azure Active Directory service. Uh, both are supported with uh, the Cloud Foundry and the Pivotal Cloud Foundry. So this is the uh, operator's experience, basically the same as Azure. Um, with developers, usually developers only use C CFCLI interface with Cloud Foundry with their applications. However, if you want to access the services on the um, uh, cloud provider, for example, the data services or uh, shares, um, you need to write code to be um, consistent with that cloud provider. And here, between Azure and Azure Stack, you can use the same Cloud Foundry tools. For example, you can use open service, for, uh, uh, open service broker for Azure, we call OSPA, um, that uh, works across Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes, and OpenShift. Uh, that means uh, you can use that for PAS and PKS. Um, and then the service will connect to services on Azure, you can do that um, from Azure Stack, or you can utilize the OSPA to connect to service on Azure Stack too. So both are okay, and then you don't need to change your code. If you want to connect to a file share uh, or uh, the file services, uh, you can use the SMB volume service, and this also works across between Azure and Azure Stack. So before we go through the demo, um, there are uh, two scenarios. Um, that it's the implementation of the user cases we just mentioned. One is the hybrid CI-CD scenario. This is what uh, Thomas will demo. And the, the goal is um, I'll have one pipeline and one single source code. And then you can run this application on Azure and Azure Stack. So you can first test on on-premise on and then push to the um, uh, to the public cloud or you can choose on um, public cloud first and test that and then uh, push to the um, um, the on-premise um, for both um, uh, both is supported the second scenario is also uh, common actually today uh, some of our uh, PCF on Azure customer is already implemented. It's a geo-distributed scenario uh, where you can use a, um, an, a global um, 
uh, traffic manager um, that will route your application to different locations. So before you can route that to different regions in the public cloud, now uh, with Azure Stack support, uh, you can route it to either uh, on-premise um, platform or on the public cloud. And then for the developers, they still use the same application. You don't need to change the code when you push to on-prem and the um, uh, public cloud. Um, this hybrid solution works um, across the uh, different languages, so total language independent. Uh, but we do want to use uh, Donet to showcase this process uh, for two reasons. Uh, the first, uh, .NET have a great ecosystem working with Azure, and now with the Azure Stack support, you use the same. You can use the same .NET SDK um, for your program, uh, working across Azure and Azure SDK. And the second, um, thanks to the um, the partnership between the community Pivotal and the Microsoft, um, .NET is now getting the first class seat on Cloud Foundry, and with a lot of uh, great feature released. Um, so as a background, there are two implementations of .NET. Uh, the first one is .NET Core. Uh, this is the open source cloud pl um, cross platform that uh, works on Linux, Windows, and Mac. Um, for, piece, uh, for Cloud Foundry, it runs on the Linux stack. So the underlying it use uh, core, uh, .NET Core build pack and uh, utilize the same runtime with other uh, Linux-based applications like Java and Go. So basically, the experience is the same. Uh, .NET Core is the same experience with other languages. The second one is the legacy .NET framework. Um, that um, is more matured, and if you have existing um, apps, you can continue to use that. Um, it's um, continue to be supported and updated. Um, it does require Windows stack, so it requires additional work. For example, Bosch uh, is updated uh, to be able to deploy uh, Windows stem cell for Cloud Foundry. And then for the Cloud Foundry runtime, it's also extended to be able to create a Windows container on the Windows themselves and host the .NET framework uh, applications. Um, besides uh, additional .NET and Windows specific features is also supported. So the uh, .NET framework um, developers will feel at home. Um, for example, something you get familiar with, the user uh, space registry um, or SDP um, to your um, um, container, and, uh, and uh, also the event, uh, event logs uh, is forwarded to syslog. Uh, so you can use those familiar um, fam um, features on the, um, on the .NET application running on uh, Cloud Foundry. Uh, despite the underlying differences, uh, really a lot of hard work to make the Windows container work. Um, what is presented to the developers are the consistent experience. So you can see here, this lists the majority of the uh, ex experience for the developers. Um, the logging, uh, the lo um, you, can through, you can still leverage log regator, and you can still use a isolate segment for the security. Um, you can uh, uh, still SSH to the container, whether it's the Linux or uh, Windows container. Um, and both uh, can utilize Open Service Broker and SAP Volume Service to access the services and the file and the storage. And you can all, um, and the stable, a steel toe for the microservice framework uh, support both .NET and the .NET framework. So it's, um, it's a great platform for .NET um, uh, developers. Um, before you write the, um, the implement the hybrid application, there are um, several areas you need to consider. Uh, the first is the uh, platform capability. So what's your requirement for the latency and the scalability? Uh, the second is app placement limitation. Uh, that some application is required for a certain stay on the certain um, um, uh, region. Um, some are very flexible. They can be both on public or pri um, private cloud. So you need to um, arrange that. And the third is data storage and processing. 
uh, where should you st start data? Can you, um, you want to, ideally you can um, uh, store the data in the, uh, the public cloud service, uh, the, um, uh, the database. Um, but um, and it's also supported just uh, on the private cloud. Uh, the service access, um, and also Azure have most of the services already released and matured, so um, it's usual a common practice. If you need some um, complicated advanced services like uh, artificial intelligence, IoT, uh, you need to connect to Azure. And then for some services, you can also stay on-prem. On and you also need to create a separate authentication and security policy on, on, on different location. And it's also ideal you have one monitoring place, so you can have one place monitor both uh, areas. And then Azure monitoring is or just get beta supported on the Azure stack too. Um, to write, to start with, uh, we have some uh, several steps to write a, a hybrid application um, between Azure and Azure Stack. Uh, basically, you can just maintain a single uh, source code, uh, but you can uh, you need to create a separate authentication. Um, you have you need to create a two uh, uh, access account uh, in Azure. It's called a service principal. Um, you have the same uh, you, uh, the same concept between Azure and Azure Stack, and uh, you can assign the role-based um, access control on the service principal, and you will use that to um, to run your application. And if you need to access local cloud resources, for example, you create a storage, uh, you will utilize the SDK. And the SDK is also shared between Azure and Azure Stack. Um, the only uh, thing you need to uh, remember is the um, um, the uh, the version is different and the endpoint is different. Um, so we will leverage the, uh, the 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 profile which I'll mention, and you can use OSPA and SAP volume service for uh, uh, access the service and the storage. To, um, and one of the important thing here is you need to dynamically I determine the platform. And, to, and, and then you load the, the profile. So the Azure API profile is, a, is an, e, an easy way to help you to uh, load the correct um, API version for your um, uh, hybrid application. So some profile is the hybrid profile. Uh, with hybrid profile, you specify what version you want to use. It will automatically load the compatible version between Azure and Azure Stack. So you don't have to figure out the, uh, the, the, um, the compatibility between an Azure, uh, Azure and Azure Stack APIs. Uh, once you have that uh, application ready, you can develop um, um, a CI/CD pipeline. And I use the uh, Azure pipeline as an example here, uh, 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 which uh, if you want to utilize Azure um, pipeline, uh, you just need to Build, uh, create a build and release definition, uh, what, what kind of uh, build and release uh, you want. And then um, to run the task, we, we, uh, we use a uh, uh, um, building block called um, agent, which is the insta uh, insta uh, same as Bosch agent. It's, uh, it's a software that um, will execute the jobs for the build and release. And uh, there is a separate agent for um, Azure and Azure Stack. And for Azure, you can utilize the uh, hosted agent, which is managed agent, automatic uh, scale and, uh, and uh, update uh, that runs on the Azure. And the Azure Stack, you can have a private agent uh, runs on Azure Stack. And then with the different agent, uh, they will execute the same pipeline on the um, Azure and uh, Azure Stack platform. So uh, that is the simple process for um, having um, a hybrid application building between Azure and Azure Stack. Uh, now um, I will give the control to Thomas, and they just build uh, the uh, .NET application running on, on the hybrid scenario with Azure and Azure Stack. OK, thanks, Ning. So yeah, like Ning mentioned, the hybrid hybrid cloud scenario is very important. Yeah, and you know, and it could be used in different scenarios. For example, you have workload that you might only want put in on-prem, and also some workload you want uh, offload to public cloud. And also, 
uh, you may want to use public cloud as a back backup site for for your company business, or you want um, burst your workload to public cloud in some uh, hot season. So yeah, d d in, I mean in different scenario, you might uh, company will consider hybrid cloud. Okay, so for for this demo, I will use public Azure and Azure Stack uh, as the hybrid cloud. Uh, for sure, uh, you don't need, have to use Azure Stack and public Azure. You can also use some other on-premise scenario as well as, as well as other public cloud scenario. For example, VMware for on-premise and also uh, GCP for public cloud. Okay, so here is the here. First, I want to uh, introduce the context uh, for this demo. So uh, this is the uh, CI/CD pipeline for a .NET Core application. So this .NET Core application is called eShop. So eShop is actually is a very famous uh, .NET sample application developed by Microsoft. And I will use the Concourse pipeline. So here the Concourse pipeline is built on top of Cloud Foundry. And I have built uh, two Cloud Foundry deployment one is on um, public Azure, and one is on um, Azure Stack. So it's just for um, one for public cloud and one for on-premise. And for this concourse, it will it will include the following jobs. So first, it will will run some unit test for for the code, and after the unit unit test passed, it will uh, deploy the application on both public cloud and also Azure Stack. And finally, it will trigger the load test for for the application on different platform. Okay, so here this job is for uh, load test on public Azure, and this is for Azure Stack. Once all is done, that means um, your code is ready. Then this job is to promote uh, a new version to public Azure, and for sure you will have also another job to promote your code. Uh, I mean, promote your release on Azure Stack. Okay. So here I just uh, trigger uh, a new pipeline, a new job. So because it will take some time, I will introduce uh, the Azure Stack and also public Azure. So in case someone might not familiar with Azure Stack, so Azure Stack actually is the Microsoft uh, on-premise solution. So it provides consistent and a similar management experience like public Azure. So you can see this is the Azure Stack portal. So the URI actually is uh, decided when you install, deploy your Azure Stack. OK, you can see the portal is very similar to the public Azure. Uh, the only difference is because Azure Stack is just GA, so it will have uh, fewer uh, services. So some, some services might not be available on Azure Stack yet. But um, moving forward, uh, Microsoft will add more and more services, enable more and more services to Azure Stack. Okay. So here, this is the Cloud Foundry deployment, a, a very typical Cloud Foundry deployment. It consists in different uh, compute resources, including the VM, the network, and also the storage. Here I use managed, man, uh, I use managed disk for public Azure, and also standard disk for uh, for Azure Stack. Okay, so this is the public Azure portal. So you can see uh, the resources, the management experience, uh, the management experience is very similar. And also, um, this application, the .NET Core application, is using a, we call it OSPA, Open Service Broker API, Open Service Broker uh, in for both Azure and Azure Stack to create a SQL database. Okay. Let us check the, the job. You can see now it's actually deployed this application to both Azure Stack and Azure. 
So because it's using .NET Core, so it, it needs to uh, installing all the dependencies. It takes some time. OK, this is the CF command line that typically an IT operator will use it to manage Cloud Foundry cluster. So actually, you can use uh, CF command line to manage both your Cloud Foundry cluster on Azure Stack and Azure. And uh, I have already enabled the service broker on, on both platform. Oh. So uh, you can see we have already enabled the Cosmos DB, the MySQL, the PostgreSQL, these services on both Azure and Azure Stack. So, okay. So, seems the deployment on Azure public Azure is already done. You can see. So now you can actually you can use this URI to to access this application. Yeah, it's already deployed on Azure Stack, uh, on public Azure. And once it gets done, on Azure Stack as well, I will promote this version, the new version on Azure. The load test is also done, and now I can promote the new version to public Azure. Okay. Yes, you can see this application is already successfully deployed. And we also use a traffic manager. So uh, in front of uh, Azure and Azure Stack, it will do automatic out ba uh, load balancing. Um, for my demo, it's configured using IP. So if the IP, IP range in a, certain, in a certain range, then it will route to your Azure Stack environment deployment. And if a route to the, uh, my configuration is if it fits into the Europe, Europe region, then it will route to the public Azure. So, okay, that's a very typical scenario for burst, for, for burst workload scenario. For example, for your company is using on-premise, for example, Azure Stack to host application and in some season, you want to burst your uh, workload and to, to public cloud, then you can use this this way to, to also push your application in, uh, in public Azure uh, for, some, for some past seasons. Okay. I think the pipeline should be already done. Yeah. You can see the job is successfully done and Finally, I can also promote the new version on Azure Stack as well. By doing this now in both platform, we will have the latest version. Okay, so here's the details for this job. You can see actually it is using the CF command line to log in and First, pull the latest release and then push it to Azure Stack environment. And finally, it will configure the router to use, your, use the latest.
Okay. Actually, they, they, are, they are the same application, just on different platform. Yeah, that's all the demo. By the way, uh, this demo, um, the process is also available on GitHub. So you want to try the CI-CD process on Azure and Azure Stack and the, the traffic manager configuration. Uh, you can follow on our instruction on GitHub too. Yeah, so, the GitHub, the Cloud Foundry on Azure is the organization name. So the, the source code of the application is here. And also we have Open Service Poker API, and which is also on our uh, Microsoft GitHub. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, so uh, thanks, Thank uh, Tuning and Thomas. Give them an applause. Thank you.